There's some new buzz in the NASCAR world. Word on a track is that Denny Hamlin is confident he'll be crowned champion this season. But that's not all. There's a twist. According to rumors, after his success on the track, he plans to leave his long-term home at Joe Gibbs Racing and join 2311 Racing. Will he truly leave JGR and team up with Michael Jordan? At this point, it's all just speculation, but wouldn't it be an epic speculation for Denny? Join us as we dive into the details. Don't miss out, subscribe to our channel, and hit that like button for more whereabouts on NASCAR. The wild and action-packed race weekend at Pocono Raceway with none other than Denny Hamlin stole the show. The guy had some seriously chaotic and unforgettable moments that had everyone talking. First off, Denny's performance was on fire. Not only did he grab his second win of the season, but he also made history by securing Toyota's 600th victory in NASCAR. That's no small feat, and it definitely got him some well-deserved attention. Now, Pocono Raceway was living up to its reputation for being a tricky track with a bunch of cautions due to crashes and wrecks. One of the most talked about collisions was between Austin Dillon and Tyler Reddick during lap 105. Man, that contact was intense. Dillon's car went spinning and slammed into the wall before finally coming to a rest in the grass. Luckily, he walked away without any injuries, but boy, he was one frustrated driver. Out of frustration, Dillon put a bold move and chucked his helmet towards Reddick's car. It was a risky move and the helmet ended up rolling onto the track. Thankfully, the other drivers managed to avoid it, but the incident sure had people talking, including the race winner, Denny Hamlin. On his podcast, Actions Detrimental, someone asked Denny if he'd prefer to toss his helmet or his hand's device onto the track. And you know what he said? He was like, helmet? Nah, let me unhook this hand's device real quick. It's much easier to throw, like a boomerang, you know. The helmet's a little heavier. He wasn't too impressed with Dylan's helmet throw, though. Some folks were saying it was weak, but Denny had a different take on it. He said, Not the greatest throw, I'll give you that. But hey, it's not an easy object to heave out there. I don't agree with calling it weak. It had some serious velocity behind it. The fine line between competitive racing and questionable behavior was on full display at the end of the race at Pocono, and it involved none other than Denny Hamlin and Kyle Larson. Only seven laps to go, and Hamlin and Larson were going at it, racing side by side, trying to outdo each other as they approached turn one. But things took a nasty turn when Larson ended up hitting the wall, and just like that, Hamlin swooped in and snatched the lead. To make matters worse, a caution flag was thrown for some other contact that happened behind them. And you know what Larson did? He pulled up right alongside Hamlin on the front stretch during the yellow flag and slammed into the driver's side door. Talk about heated emotions on display. While Hamlin was basking in the glory of his victory, Larson was seething with anger over the incident. In his post-race interview with NASCAR, he didn't hold back, saying, In my eyes, hey, I could have had 10 more playoff points and 2 more wins right now if not for Hamlin. Yeah, I'm mad, and I have every right to be. But here's the kicker. This wasn't the first time Larson and Hamlin got tangled up with each other. Earlier at Kansas, Larson's potential win was nearly derailed when Hamlin bumped him from behind. Now, Larson made it clear that what happened in Kansas was just a racing incident, but the situation at Pocono was a whole different story. You know, looking back 17 years ago, Denny Hamlin was this fresh-faced rookie at Pocono Racing, and he surprised everyone by sweeping a pair of races at one of NASCAR's trickiest tracks. Back then, he was an unknown driver, just starting with Joe Gibbs Racing, which had expanded to three full-time entries not long before. He ran a few races in 2005 to prepare for his rookie season, and his double wins at the same track were only the second time that had ever happened, the first being Jimmy Johnson in 2002 at Dover. But times have changed. Now, Denny walks around Pocono as a seasoned veteran, no longer sporting that baby face. The gray stubble on his face and a few wrinkles around his eyes are badges of his hard work and dedication over the years. And hey, he's not just a top NASCAR driver anymore. He's also a co-owner of 2311 Racing with the legendary Michael Jordan himself. He's learned so much from Joe Gibbs and has been implementing those lessons to make sure his team can go the distance. Being both an owner and a driver is no easy feat, and Denny admits that it can get exhausting at times, but he's fueled by the thrill of competition knowing that every week he has a shot at victory. And when he sees his team, 2311 Racing, performing well, it makes all the hard work worth it. He and Jordan make a great team, each focusing on what they do best. Jordan taking care of the business side and Denny handling the competition side. Denny's journey in NASCAR has been quite the ride. He's become one of the most respected voices in the sport, understanding both the business aspect and the racing side of things. Fans love him for his modest roots as a short track racer in Virginia, and that connection is still strong today, even in his 18th Cup season. Throughout his career, he's only raced for Joe Gibbs Racing, 
racking up impressive wins, including three Daytona 500s, three Southern 500s, and a Coca-Cola 600. And after his recent victory at Pocono, he's now the winningest driver at that track with seven wins. Talk about a legend in the making. Despite all the successes, there's one thing missing from Denny's trophy case, a championship trophy. He's often joked about it, but deep down, you know he wants it badly. He's determined to show fans what it's like to be both an owner and a driver in this new era of NASCAR racing through his podcast, Actions Detrimental, where he discusses all aspects of the sport. As Denny enters a contract year, there's no doubt that he'll continue to be a force to be reckoned with. And with his ownership role, his situation seems pretty stable compared to other free agents. Joe Gibbs himself has made it clear that they're working on everything at their place, but they know Denny isn't going anywhere. Denny's got his eyes set on going out on top before he calls it a career. He's not one to wait until he's no longer competitive to retire. He wants to keep racing, keep competing for wins, and that drive keeps him going strong. Sure, father time is undefeated, but Denny is still feeling as strong and fast as ever. It looks like Denny Hamlin is in a pretty good spot with his team and manufacturer. Unlike Kyle Busch, who had a very public falling out with Joe Gibbs Racing last season, Denny seems to have everyone's support. Even though his contract with Coach Gibbs Racing Team is up at the end of the season, Denny doesn't seem too concerned about it. And honestly, he's proven himself to be a real asset to the team. He's just behind his former teammate on the all-time wins list for the organization, and it's clear that he's more than capable of leading the team forward. There have been hints that retirement might be on the horizon for Denny, especially with Martin Truex Jr. stepping up his game this year. But hey, retirement talk aside, Denny's still focused on giving his best on the track. With JGR already having two young drivers in Ty Gibbs and Christopher Bell, and the possibility of adding a third recruit in 2024, having Denny as a steady and experienced presence could be just what the team needs as they move forward. And it's not just his team that's backing him up. Toyota Racing Development, or TRD, President David Wilson has expressed his confidence in Denny's future with the team. He said, He'll be back. There's no question in our mind, and there's no question in Joe Gibbs' mind. We're working through some details, and it's a complicated consideration because now he's not just a driver for Joe Gibbs Racing, he's also a team owner. And given that, there has to be alignment for Toyota and Denny across both those considerations. As for this season, Denny is currently sitting in third place in the 2023 regular season standings, right behind his teammate Martin Truex Jr. and William Byron from Hendrick Motorsports. He's got his eyes set on that elusive championship title that has somehow eluded him since he joined JGR back in 2006. David Wilson had some great things to say about Denny's progress as both a driver and a person. In an interview with NASCAR.com, he said, I think both Tyler Gibbs and I have really enjoyed watching his maturation, not just as a driver, not just as a team owner, but as a human being and as a person. He added, I'm really proud of that because, let's face it, 15 years ago, it was difficult to have a conversation about the weather with Denny while you were standing on the grid next to him, but he's come a long way. Speaking on his chances of staying at JGR, the 42-year-old says, I think if it was up to Gibbs and myself, I'd love to stay there and retire there. That's the number one thing, but there's not a scenario that I ever put out of the window. Denny Hamlin got his sights set on that championship, and with his determination and talent, he's got a real shot at making it happen. So that's all we've got for today. We hope you enjoyed it. Tell us what you think of the video in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you in the upcoming video.